Well, in looking at the last game, uh, I think there was a lot of things that we did well in the game. I think we ran the ball probably most effectively uh, as we have all season long, especially on direct runs. Uh, did a pretty good job on third down. Obviously made some uh, execution errors. Uh, turning the ball over in the red zone on first and two at the two is not a good thing. And, um, you know, when we didn't execute, we didn't have the same relative success. And uh, most of that comes from a lack of attention to detail, which really starts in practice, which is on us and coach, as coaches to, you know, get the players to do a little better. Um, defensively, you know, we probably, you know, played the run a little better, but when we didn't play and fit the gaps like we were supposed to, that's when they made a couple of explosive runs. So those are things that we need to get fixed, you know, as well. Um, so, you know, the focus needs on to, to be on completely on this game, completely day to day this week. You know, that's the number one preparation that we have to have is the mindset that this is the most important game that we're playing all year long and that everybody's focused from day one, practice one, on what we have to do to have success in the game that we have this week. Uh, I think it's important that, you know, when you have uh, a new quarterback, uh, that he has a chance to prepare and you clearly define the things that you want to do with him in the game. Uh, so he gets a good visual picture of and repetitions at, you know, what he's going to be expected to do in the game. And I think that's really important. You know, great to be playing at home this week. It was a great atmosphere this past Saturday night, uh, another night game for us. And, um, you know, we're certainly looking forward to homecoming and the challenges that, uh, you know, this team brings to us. Uh, <coughs> you know, to me, Arkansas, um, does a lot of things on offense. They're playing better on defense. I think this is a team that's improved, you know, throughout the course of the season. Played Texas A&M really, really tough. Uh, played well in this game last week until the third quarter. Uh, so, you know, again, I think it's really important for us to do a good job, you know, in in our preparation. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, an update on Tua. You know, surgery was successful. Um, there's no real timetable, you know, for his return, but the expectation is is <coughs> he will be he will be uh, non weight bearing for several days, uh, and then he'll be able to come back uh, as his rehab allows him. Uh, so we're hopeful that you know in a ten day period he'll be you know back being able to do pretty active type rehab, and we'll see how it goes from there. But these things are pretty unpredictable at this point. Quickly, Coach, do you have any more information on Will Reichard and, and where his status is? Uh, you know, I, we didn't get it. We, we did it, uh, another MRI today uh, to see, you know, what the damage is. But I, I would say just the fact that he re-injured himself to whatever degree, he'll probably not be available this week. Third down defense, how much of that is – being in third and short more often than you'd like, and how much of that is just a lack of execution on third down? Well, I think it's a combination of creating the right down and distance for yourself on third down, which obviously if they get you in third and short, they have a better chance to to make it. Um, and I also think that we've had a couple penalties on third down, which you know have extended drives, whether it's pass interference or whatever it might be. But I do think that we need to do a better job of executing um, you know, whether it's a pressure or a coverage, um, we're close a lot of the times, but we need to make the plays. Right here with Chris. Two things, please. Uh, first, do you have an update on LeBron Ray? No. How do you think Mac handled the situation and just kind of got thrown in, like, into the situation? Well, you know, I, I think that you know he didn't do anything that really hurt us in the game. Uh, I think that. Um, you know, he had two balls that were dropped, you know, that were critical situations in the game. Uh, the one play that he scrambled on third down where he could have thrown the ball, I, I would assume that if you ask him, he would say, I wish I would have thrown the ball because we would have made a first down and the guy was open. But, uh, I mean, all in all, I thought he handled the situation really well. And, um, 
you know, it's a difficult circumstance to get thrown into. Uh, and, you know, we, we've got a lot of confidence in Mac. And, um, you know, with a week of preparation, I think he'll uh, do a lot better in this game. How much progress have you seen from Talia this year? And is he an option for playing time against Arkansas? Well, he's the backup quarterback, you know, in this game. So it, it is an option. Uh, I think he's got a lot of talent. Uh, we've tried to get him uh, some reps, you know, throughout the course of the year uh, in case this happened. Uh, so it's going to be really important that we do a good job of progressing him this week as well. Uh, Alex Leatherwood was the SEC offensive lineman of the week. What did you see from him in this last game and really all season? Played really well. It was his probably best game overall. And, um, you know, Alex has played well for us all year long. Uh, but I thought that, you know, he really, really did a good job in this game. I thought the entire offensive line did a good job in this game. Uh, we, we did make a couple mistakes in pass protection uh, that got the quarterback hit. But uh, all in all, uh, I thought they did a good job. And Alex especially – you know, played well in this game. He was physical. He played with a lot of toughness. He didn't make any mental errors and uh, really did a nice job. Uh, Nick, you mentioned the responsibility that each player has on Saturday after the game. Um, what is your, what is the most important trait of a good leader, in your opinion? I'm not sure I understand the question or the first part of the question, but, um, well, you know, the trademark of a good leader to me is the first thing you have to do is be committed to doing things correctly yourself. Uh, because it's important if you're going to be a leader to set a good example for other people. Uh, you got to be somebody that somebody wants to emulate and you got to care enough about other people to help them for their benefit. So you got to be willing to serve. And, um, you know, we have some guys that do a really good job of that on our team. and. Um, you know, hopefully it'll be important that they step forward this week. Um, Coach, you, you used Slade, obviously, in the Wildcat down on the goal line. Is that a, a formation or, or plays that need to be a surprise, that, that you try and take the other team by surprise, or is that something you have a package for that he Well, can we have with? a package of it, and, you know, we've done it in just about, I don't know, the last three games. Um, all the plays to up to the last game was were running plays, um, so. But you know we thought Slade could throw the ball well enough to make that play on the goal line, which was kind of a pop pass to the tight end, um, and he, he did a good job. It was a well executed play. You've talked about Mac Jones' growth and his ability to play the next play, but where have you seen the biggest strides in his game, and what has he been working on primarily this season? Well, I, I, you know, I think every player is trying to, you know, work on consistency and performance. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't care if you're playing quarterback or left tackle or right tackle or right corner. You know, every player has something that they can improve on. You know, we talk about. You know, our players always trying to work toward perfection, knowing that they can't get there, but somewhere along the way they get to some point of excellence. And uh, I think with Mac, it's not a matter of, you know, arm talent or ability. It's, um, you know, staying focused and being able to execute on a consistent basis and make good choices and decisions and, you know, not think about it too much and just, you know, take what the defense gives. And uh, when he's done that, he's been very, very effective, and that's what we've you know, work with him on, you know, throughout the season. And for the most part, he's done a pretty good job of that. With the Wildcat, it's been around for about a decade or so. How has it evolved as a formation, as a concept in that time? Well, I, I think in the beginning, uh, when people went in Wildcat, basically they were putting a running back. They were forcing you to put somebody on the quarterback, which meant you had one less guy in the box that, they didn't have to block because he was covering a quarterback. And they ran pretty much regular direct runs, meaning power off tackle. Well, with the advent of the spread and all the quarterback runs that go with the spread, which are misdirection plays, read sweep cue powers, all kinds of different things that the quarterback can be a runner on, now the Wildcat if you have a guy that can do those types of things is expanded, not to just be direct runs, but 
to be a lot of the quarterback runs that people run and spread uh, with a guy that maybe is a better runner or has more running back type skills. Uh, and if you don't want to put your quarterback in that position to be that runner, which a lot of people don't have a problem with, uh, and they have a guy who can do it. Just like, you know, when Jalen was here, he could do it, and we did it with him. Uh, we don't necessarily – Tua really can do it, but we just choose not to do it with him. So uh, I think that's pretty much how it's evolved. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you.